DC, it's Ron. Thanks for stopping by. Well, I've got that album that I left you guys hanging on last week. That was pretty mean of me, wasn't it? I'm sorry. In fact, I even got a comment from one of my subscribers. Ron, you cliffhanging SOB. <laughs> I probably deserved that, but I think he was just joking. But uh, anyway, I've got the album to show, and as well, I've got a pretty nice stack of 45s to show as well. So uh, those will be coming up in a few. And uh, this is the album that I got. And it's sort of a psych garage album from the West Coast. And I got a really good write up in uh, the Asset Archives. And I'd never heard of it till I recently saw it. And it's uh, re the name of the band is Research 1612. And the album is In Research. And uh, it's their only album. And it's sort of a garage psych album. And it's got, actually it's kind of uh, got some different styles. It starts off with, uh, on side one, it starts off with kind of a funky garage rock number called Can You Baby. And then it goes into Highway Song, which is kind of a birdsy folk rock tune. And uh, it's got some, uh, it's got a song, it's a, sort of a novelty drug song kind of like Country Joe and the Fish called The Grass is Greener. Um, that's probably one of the lesser tunes on the album. This is a, a pretty good album, pretty solid. Uh, I like it. And uh, it's got, it's, it's pretty wacky. It's got songs about drugs and sex. And uh, there's, the last track on side one is called John. And it's a psychedelic song that's uh, about a toilet, um, if you can imagine that. And then uh, it's got, uh, side two's got Lip Smackin' Good, which is kind of like about phone sex. Uh, excellent psych tune called Omar. Uh, another psych tune called Looking in the Toaster. And I believe somebody made a video for that on YouTube that's pretty trippy. So if it's still on there, I'm going to link it into my comments on this video so you can check it out. This whole album is not on YouTube, uh, just a couple of tracks. So uh, I'll be playing uh, side two of this a little bit later. Uh, this band, I believe, was out of the Hollywood area. And uh, it was recorded at United Audio in Santa Ana, California. Uh, kind of in the late 67, early 68 time period, I believe. And uh, really good, and while we're checking out, I got a good copy because uh, it was still sealed. So, I mean, it's beautiful condition. Got a good deal on it. Um, you could probably get a near mint copy for 50, 60 bucks. So, uh, it's, it's well worth grabbing. It's on an obscure independent label called Flick City. There's a couple of different label variations of this. Uh, one of the variations has got some red printing on it. This one's all blue. Sounds great. Mixed nice. It's kind of a, got a sparse mix where the, the instrumentation is not real full. Big sound. It's kind of sparse. There's a lot of separation going on. And uh, I, I just... I love this album. It's so cool. So I definitely check it out. And uh, I was going through some of my t-shirts and I came across a shirt that I'm going to show. And I had, I had one of these when I was a kid. Uh, about 1966, 67 when Batman was all the rage on TV. Uh, a friend of mine down the street got a couple of Batman shirts. And uh, one of them he liked the best, and he gave me the other one. They were both different. So, I had that thing for years, and I think after I grew out of it, I, uh, it probably got thrown out. And uh, I always wished that I could find another one. 
And uh, one day I was in the antique mall. This was about maybe 10 to 15 years ago when I was at the antique mall. And I actually saw one hanging on a hanger up in the booth. And it was cheap. Um, I think it was under $10. So, man, I grabbed it so fast, I couldn't believe it. It's a nice condition. And it, I think it's the exact same size that I had when I was a kid. And uh, it says Chris on it, which was a Phoenix Top 40 AM radio station here. And, uh, I mean, that is just so cool. I just, I can't tell you how many times I thought about finding this shirt again it was just always in the back of my mind god I wish I could find that I wish I could find it you know and bingo I scored it I, I just couldn't believe it these are rare it would be cool if it was big enough I could wear it but like I say it's probably the same size I had when I was a kid so that's that's a neat thing so yeah, I just wanted to share that shirt with you guys because I know there's some Batman collectors out there somewhere uh, that are watching this video. I think you might like, thought you might like to see that. So anyway, let's get going with the 45, shall we? take a look at these 45s that I got and the birds have migrated to the southwest for the winter so we're gonna get started with some birds uh, this is part of a Sunday's collection that they put out in 2004 of uh, I believe 545s previously uh, well I think they have been previously released in some form uh, I think a lot of these came, originally came out on the 1990 CD box set and it's alternate takes and uh, stuff that didn't get put out and it's called cancel flights meaning that it was these were projected to be 45s and for whatever reason uh, they never got out so it's kind of cool and uh, they issued them on the uh, Columbia Red Label originally when this came out come out in a box set that's currently being released without the box, which I didn't get, unfortunately. But uh, Sundays was running a sale around Christmas, 20% off everything. So, uh, yeah, I got a few things from them during the sale. This was one of them. So, good deal. Uh, this is uh, another one that I got. Cool sleeve. Look at that construction worker looking over the wall. And these are all on black vinyl, cardboard sleeves. the packaging when this originally came out I didn't know about it I never saw it in the store you know in, 04, or in 2004 you know I didn't have internet or anything like that so yeah, I didn't know anything about it. 
pretty cool though. Okay, we're gonna look at some uh, reissues. This is a Norton reissue from 2000. And it's 1958 demos of the Whalers, Scotch on the Rocks, which would, uh, that's an early title for, uh, oh man, I can't think of the name of the song. Um, I'm sorry, I can't think of it. It's something to do with drinking. But anyway, and then it's got, uh, Scotch on the Rocks and Snake Pit, and then it's got uh, Dirty Robber and High Wall. Pretty cool. Uh, this is uh, the end results, and uh, this is on Ch Chachahuchi, and this is a Sunday's reissue. These are mega rare. There's only like one. I read on the Sunday's website there's only one known copy to exist of this garage record. And that's a good one, too. I don't know what the story is behind that. They didn't explain the, the reasoning behind that, but uh, evidently uh, it was never issued or whatever. And I don't know. It is weird. But I put a original company sleeve. Uh, Chattahoochee uh, company sleeve with this and those are pretty rare and this, these are nice these are like heavy stock paper very nice <laughs> uh, this is the sloth making love and uh, you mean everything and this is a mega rare uh, the originals of this go for thousands and thousands of dollars um, just insane money and it's a reproduction of the original picture sleeve. And it's real primitive uh, Bo Diddley stomper. Pretty cool. Here's a good one, Oscar and the Majestics. Uh, previously unreleased, uh, Baby Under My Skin. Excellent version of I Can't Explain by The Who, Sundays. Uh, that's enough. That's all the reissues that I got. And then I got uh, this is like a kid's record, uh, 1950, uh, 51 or 51 or 52, and it's uh, Captain Video. And uh, there's a uh, Honeymooners episode where uh, Ed Norton is watching Captain Video on TV, and uh, yellow vinyl. Now this originally did have a picture sleeve, um, but I picked this up, you know, fairly cheap. Uh, it's not in bad shape for being a kid's record, so it's really cool, very cool. So I think that was also that was a TV show, and it's got uh, the voice of the guy that was Captain Video on the TV show is on that record. Then I got. Uh, Manford Man, uh, Do Wah Diddy, uh, their big hit. And this was released in uh, August 64. This is a Monarch pressing. And that's a rare Ascot sleeve. You just don't see those around. There's another Birds. And this is a. Uh, remember a while back I showed that Bob Dylan Philco record? that had Philco stamped on it. It was part of a promotional box for their uh, record players. Well, this is the same kind of thing, but it's stamped Masterworks, which was a Columbia line of record players. Um, I come across this. It's not in very good condition, but I had to get it just for to have it as an example. I'd never heard of it or seen it before. And it's got this... Uh, sticker on there that says certified gold standard on it which I think is probably original to the record then I got the first uh, Big Brother and the Holding Company record and uh, 
It's All Is Loneliness and Blindman. And uh, this was recorded in Chicago in 1966. And it was released in October the following month. This was released way before their first album. Um, I, earlier I said that in one of my videos I said that uh, that first album on Mainstream came out after uh, the Columbia uh, Cheap Thrills album. Uh, that was wrong. Um, I don't know why I said that, but anyway, the, the album came out in like uh, nearly a year later after this. So I think it was like in August. August of 67 so yeah pretty cool it's not great shape but it's not bad shape you know it's kind of a VG a strong VG so cool and those are pretty rare it sold in the Bay Area but in the rest of the country it just didn't sell and incidentally Big Brother and the holding company was the first rock band to be signed to mainstream uh, here's uh, Sunshine of Your Love, uh, single edited version. They uh, did some fancy editing and cut a guitar solo out of the center of the record for airplay purposes. I, I think they should have done that on the promos only and then for the commercial stock copies they could have put the full length version on there. I don't know why they did that but and it's got the uh, SWLABR on the flip which is an acronym for she was no she yeah she was like a bearded rainbow and uh, the speaker told me about that one and th this is uh, from December of 67 and it's a monarch pressing Now this one, I just I just picked this sleeve up, and I've had the gold and the uh, orange one, uh, the yellow and the orange one. I've had that one, but I've never had the black and the blue one ver version before. So, wow, real cool. Now, these seem to be rarer than the other color. I don't know. What do you guys say? I I've seen more of the the yellow ones and the orange ones than, than this one. Okay, this is uh, the first 45 by Stiv Baders, who was in the Dead Boys, the punk rock band, the Dead Boys. And this is his first solo record on Bomp, 1979. Uh, excellent power pop, cover version of It's Cold Outside by the Choir, which they, that band originally did that in 67. And uh, I got, this is just minty, excellent minty condition. Cool. Okay, I got another punk rock gem that fell through the cracks at the record store. And uh, this is it. It's the Damned Love Song. This is an original French copy, which is very rare. Uh, when I first saw it, I didn't know how rare or valuable it was because I don't know this band that well. So I went home and I did my homework and I found out what these went for and I went back and I got it. This was not, as far as 45s go, this was not cheap. But compared to what it's worth, it was just a drop in the bucket. These, these go for a lot of money, let me tell you. And uh, the UK versions, they're common. There's a lot of repressings, different. The, the picture sleeves in the UK came in four different versions. Um, a photo of each band member on a, a, a different sleeve, whereas this has all four photos on one sleeve. And uh, has the same back as the UK, same tracks. And uh, this is an original shrink, and it's just incredible condition. So what an amazing find. This was released in France, the Netherlands, and Germany, as well as the UK. France, 
Germany and the Netherlands issued at one time. It was never reissued. Any any pressing from those countries are worth a lot of money and they all had different picture sleeves. So this is a unique picture sleeve to France. And uh, this is the record, Chiswick. This thing is just amazingly near mint condition. Just unbelievable. Great. Wow. So yeah, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this thing. Um, they go, like I said, they do go for a lot of money. It's like silly money, really. So I don't. Know, maybe one day I'll flip it and then get just get a UK version, which is about twenty bucks. But for now. I'm going to hang on to it. It's money in the bank. So uh, that does it for the showing. And uh, thanks for dropping by, checking out what I got. And uh, hope you enjoyed listening to that uh, research album. Um, I, had it, I had it set on mono, and I had uh, both channels coming out one speaker uh, for the camera. So I hope that, that uh, sounds pretty cool that way. So uh, until the next time, take it easy, and catch you later. Bye.